Our next dish combines two icons of American barbecue, brisket and beef ribs. It starts with the biggest, baddest rib on planet barbecue, the beef plate rib. The wow power is off the charts. This is a beef plate rib. It's cut from the lower forequarter of the steer. There are only three ribs to a rack, and each rack weighs seven to nine pounds. To start, I'm gonna cut a series of cross hatches on the top of the rib, about a quarter of an inch apart and an eighth of an inch deep. These cross hatches help the spices get into the meat and help release some of the excess fat. Now the next thing you want to do is turn the rib over and make a lengthwise slit down each bone through the membrane. This will help you remove the bones when the rib is cooked. Okay, and I'll do the other beef rib the same way. So where have beef plate ribs been all these years? I ate my first beef plate rib at Mighty Quinn's Barbecue in New York City. It's also a specialty at the famous Franklin's Barbecue in Austin, Texas, and Hometown Barbecue in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Once again, turn the beef rib over and make a lengthwise slit through the membrane along the bone on the back of the rib. Next, the rub. It couldn't be simpler. Equal parts sea salt, freshly ground or cracked black peppercorns, and hot pepper flakes. Mix the ingredients with your fingers. The idea is to keep the seasoning simple. This is really all about the smoke and the meat. Now sprinkle the ribs on both sides and rub the seasonings into the meat. That's why it's called a rub. Turn the bones over. And don't forget to season the ends of the ribs and the sides of the ribs. All right, just two more things you need to do. Fill a steam pot with beer. This will go in the smoker and it will help create a moist environment to keep your ribs moist. and fill a spray bottle with distilled white vinegar. Now let me show you the smoker. To cook the ribs, I'm using an offset barrel smoker. It has a firebox that is adjacent to and slightly lower than the main cook chamber. I built a hot bed of charcoal embers earlier to actually heat the smoker. And then to generate smoke, I'm adding an oak log to the fire. Now it's time for the beef. So now I'll open the cook chamber. And because the cook chamber is hotter at the firebox end than the chimney end, I'll place the largest rack of ribs, fat side toward the fire here, and then the next rack of ribs, fat side toward the fire, and then that pot of beer to create a steam pot in the smoker. Last step, spritz the ribs with vinegar. Now and every hour for the first five hours of the smoke. Now close the smoke chamber. Cook time, about 10 hours. And I just want to point one thing out to you. Uh, the temperature at the smoker down at this end is about 250 degrees. At this end, about 225 degrees. So halfway through the cook, I'm going to switch the racks of ribs so they cook evenly. Meanwhile, let me show you how to make the chipotle barbecue sauce. Now the barbecue sauce, it is a chipotle molasses barbecue sauce 
Chipotle makes it hot. Molasses and brown sugar make it sweet. Bourbon makes it, well, bourbon just makes everything taste better. We'll start with ketchup, brown sugar, molasses, which gives you sweetness, but also a kind of minerally earthy flavor. Then mustard for spice. Your favorite hot sauce for heat. Worcestershire sauce. Liquid smoke, which believe it or not folks, is a natural product made by condensing wood smoke. Chipotle chilies, so that's where your heat and additional smoke comes from. Finally, garlic powder. And of course, bourbon. And remember what Mark Twain said about whiskey, too much is just enough. Whisk these ingredients together and bring to a boil. Then gently simmer the sauce until thick, concentrated, and luscious. That'll take about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, it's been 10 hours. And check out those ribs. If Michelangelo had been a barbecue guy, these would have been his Sistine Chapel. And they sure look done, you can see, because the meat has shrunk back from the ends of the bones. But I always like to use a Maverick Pro Temp thermometer. Insert it in the deepest part of the ribs. You're looking for 195 to 200. Nailed it. Put on insulated gloves to take the ribs off the smoker. Pretty fragile, so I don't like to use tongues. We'll just pull them off. That's one. Beautiful. And here's two. And I'll just close the smoker. So to serve the ribs, what I like to do is turn them over. Remember we made those slits in the membrane? So it'll be real easy just to pull the bone out. That's how tender these are. So to serve the beef ribs, I'll turn them over and you cut the ribs crosswise into slices. You slice it just like you would brisket. That's why I call this brisket on the bone. And look at those slices. Look at that gorgeous smoke ring, so juicy that if I press the meat with the side of the knife, it squirts. I am so excited about trying this. So, take the beef. Mm. So tell you what, I'm gonna try it by itself before I add the sauce. So make a cut. Mm. So incredibly tender. I hear the angels singing. This is so tender. So luscious, melts on your tongue, great smoky crust on the outside. Now let's try it with that Chipotle molasses barbecue sauce. Mmm. The sauce is really complex with the mustard, the bourbon, Chipotle, but you know what? I'm going for this beef by itself. Oh, beef ribs, salt, pepper, and hot pepper flakes, and wood smoke. That's pretty simple in my book. 